Welcome, my name is Hazard. I'm an F-35 fighter pilot for the Air Force. Today, we're gonna to talk about why there's been such negative media attention towards the F-35. Now, before we get started, I just wanna say these are my opinions and my opinions alone. I don't represent the Air Force when I'm talking right now or the government or Lockheed. So these are my opinions, but I do think I have a unique perspective being a F-35 pilot. So the first has to do with a paradigm shift in aviation. So these happen every few decades. If you go back to the 50s and 60s, the primary metric a fighter was judged by was how high and how fast it could fly. So you saw interceptors like the F-104 be developed from this, fly at Mach 2 at 50 plus thousand feet. Its job was to intercept Russian bombers and potentially launch nuclear-tipped air-to-air missiles to, uh, to destroy those bombers. Then in the 1970s, there's a man named John Boyd, who's really a legendary fighter pilot. He came around and he said, no, it's not how high and how fast that's going to determine how good a fighter is in the coming years. It's how tightly it can turn and how long it can sustain that turn. And so what you saw is the F-16 really be developed from that philosophy. So it's a dogfighting machine and uh, really good at, at turning quickly has a great thrust to weight ratio, really a stripped down hot rod, especially as they designed it back then before they put on all the, uh, the external stuff that they have on now. Since about 2005, there's been another paradigm shift. So we have shifted from how high and how fast a fighter can go to how tightly it can turn to now it has to do with stealth, it has to do with having great sensors, with fusing that data together and networking it out to other fighters. So those are what make a fighter survivable and lethal in a combat environment, especially a contested environment today. Now, there are really two reasons why this hasn't translated to the public. The first is that these numbers are all classified and ambiguous, like how fast it can network with other aircraft, how many participants it can network with. That's classified information. Uh, additionally, these aren't sexy things. So an air show doesn't really showcase you know, how fast uh, F-35 can network with other aircraft out there. It's really designed to showcase the aerodynamics, which are only a fraction of what determine uh, how good a fighter is. All right, the second reason has to do with technology. So anytime a new technology is introduced, it follows what's called an S-curve. So very early on, uh, it progresses very slowly, and in fact, it's worse than the technology it's replacing as the engineers are working out all the bugs. So if you look around wherever you're sitting right now, if you have a laptop, there's an LCD monitor, if there are LED light bulbs, if uh, you have a smartphone, or if you're listening and streaming music, all of these had major, major issues when uh, they were first introduced. And in fact, there's a lot of criticism that they weren't as good as the technology they were replacing. Let me ask you about uh, the iPhone and the Zune, if, if I may. The Zune uh, was getting some traction, then Steve Jobs goes to Macworld and he, he pulls out this iPhone. What was your first reaction when you saw that? <laughs> $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. Now, we're selling millions and millions and millions of phones a year. Apple is selling zero phones a year. In six months, they'll have the most expensive phone by far ever in the marketplace. After a while, the engineers worked out all the bugs and they've surpassed whatever they replaced. Fighter aircraft are no different. So when the F-35 was first introduced, it had a lot of issues, but several years ago, the F-35 was able to surpass the capability of fortune fighters like the F-16. And if you think about it, F-16, F-15, they've been incredible aircraft but they've been iterated on for decades. So there's not as much juice to squeeze out as the F-35. So while the F-35 has already surpassed the F-16, I think in five or 10 years, it's gonna be exponentially better. All right, so the next issue has to do with what's called concurrency. So typically when there's a new fighter, you will build a test fleet, you'll figure out all the bugs, you'll finalize the design, and then you'll start production. Now, Lockheed chose to collapse the timeline by merging those steps. And so we did something called concurrency, where we knew we were going to have to go back and retrofit and fix a lot of the bugs for the early production F-35s, but we were able to start building them very quickly. 
Now, I think the jury's still out on if this was a good idea or not, but it had the appearance of looking like we were spending a lot of money and a lot of time and effort on a jet that was inferior to the F-16. But as I said before, the F-35 has really surpassed uh, the F-16, and that happened a couple of years ago. Now, the third reason is that the F-35 is the first jet really to grow up in the social media age. So there's a lot of scrutiny on every little problem that the F-35 had. I did some digging, looked up the F-16 accident rate back when it was first introduced in the 1970s and 80s, and it had an accident rate that was 15 times higher than it is today. There were years where they were losing an F-16 every two weeks. And by comparison, the F-35, we lost less than five total, and that includes ground incidents over the last decade. So I think if the F-16 had the social media uh, attention that the F-35 does today, that um, potentially you know, they would have canceled the program. But the F-16 went on to become the backbone of the U.S. Air Force as well as Air Forces around the world. So a very successful program, but just like anything, it was the first electric jet, which means uh, first fly-by-wire aircraft production at least. And uh, so they had a lot of, lot of kinks to, to work out, but it's an extremely successful aircraft now. So there you go. Those are the main reasons why there's been a lot of negative press with the F-35. If you talk to any fighter pilot that has flown with the F-35 or against the F-35 in training over the last few years, they will say that the F-35 is one of the premier fighters in the world today. The F-35 and the F-22 represent the future of air power. More than that, they represent air power right now. So this isn't some theoretical thing that I'm saying is going to happen in five or ten years. The shift has already happened. So there you go. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure to subscribe. If you have questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to them and I'll talk to you next time.